Uh, mga students, welcome back. Pag-usapan natin sa ngayon yung value-added tax. Of course, as we explain to you, as I explain to you the value-added tax, I will be presenting to you also the characteristics of it. Because remember, no, kakapaliwanan ko lang nito sa naunang video lecture, value-added tax is one of the three types of business taxes. So, yun muna yung ating pag-usapan dito. Actually, hindi na po ito bago sa inyo, no? Kasi tayo ay mga consumer. Sa araw-araw, halos bumibili tayo. Tayo ay nauutusan ng ating mga magulang na pumunta sa convenience store, sa grocery, bumili. Okay? So, pag nare-receive natin yung resibo, mapatay receipt man yan. Or OR, ano? Or yung mga formal na receipts. Makikita ninyo kung... Curious kayo ano, ano yung mga naka-imprinta naka sa resibo na yan. Makikita ninyo madalas yung value-added tax. Kasi karamihan, majority sa mga business transactions ay merong value-added tax. Ano nga ba ang VAT or the value-added tax? O parang business taxes lang, di ba? Tax on business. So pag VAT, tax on value-added. No? <laughs> Pero ano nga ba talagang ibig dito sabihin? Let me just read this to you, class. No? VAT is a tax on the value added. O, totoo nga pala, sir. No? Tax on the value added. Value added of what? By every seller to the purchase price or cost in the sale or list of goods, property or services in the ordinary course of trade or business, as well as on importation of goods into the Philippines, whether or for personal or business use. O kasi di ba, ito medyo presko pa sa ating isipan unless hindi natin ito masyado na intindihan. And we have to capture first the topic before moving on to the next kasi chain reaction yan. Yung mga maintindihan mo ngayon, yung mga inaaral mo ngayon, konektado yan sa inaaral mo sa mga naunang slides, sa mga naunang video lectures. So I hope once you read or once you study a particular topic, you should have already studied the previous topics and if ever you have questions, you ask me or you ask the professor kung ibang subject man po ito. Okay? Ang value-added tax is a tax on the value-added. No? Ang tax kasi na ito ay dinadagdag sa halaga ng mga bilihin. Of course, yung binibili natin, if you are the buyer, yung pinapurchase natin or the purchase price is 100%. Tapos, may pinapatong tayo na value-added tax. And that is this one. In our Philippine setting, sa Pilipinas, the value-added tax is 12%. Okay? Sa ibang bansa, maaring ibang porsyento po ito. But, Okay, sa atin po, ang value-added tax is 12% and it is added on the purchase price or cost no, of the sale or list of goods. So, hindi lang sa mga bentahan ng mga produkto, ano, maging sa pangungupahan. Okay? Hindi lamang sa pangungupahan ng mga units. no. Even if we are leasing for something, we are leasing the use of machineries. We are leasing goods, no? Nirerentahan natin yung ibang mga gamit. Okay? Pag-leasing kasi hindi naman yung palaging units or spaces yung nirerentahan natin. Maaring ibang bagay. Nagrenta ka ng sasakyan. Nagrenta ka ng mga musical equipments, piano, gitara, or kung ano paman, no? So that is considered leasing. Okay? Or services. In the ordinary course, oh, eto papasok tayo sa in the ordinary course of business. Kasi remember, pag hindi po yan in the ordinary course of business, pag mga isolated transactions, ano ang sabi doon sa first video lecture? I hope nakuha po ninyo yun. And kasama po ano yung importation into the Philippines, pero whether for personal or business use. We are applying the value-added tax. Now, this one, another definition, no? Pag sinabi natin, but it is a tax on consumption. Ano ba yung consumption? 
pagkonsumo, paggamit natin ng mga bagay na yan, o ng mga serbisyo. Levied, no? ipinapataw on the sale, barter, exchange, or list of goods or properties and services in the Philippines, which is what we call the cross-border doctrine. Oh, after this, I will explain to you what is this cross-border doctrine na tinatawag. And on the importation of goods into the Philippines, levied at each stage of production and distribution process. You may want to refer to RR4-2007. Now, ano pa ibig sabihin ng cross-border doctrine? Ito po yan. Pag sinabi kasi natin na cross-border doctrine, uh, yung VAT, yung value-added tax, hindi dapat yan pwedeng i-impose, no? No VAT shall be imposed to form part of the cost of goods destined for consumption outside the territorial border of the Philippine Taxing Authority. Kasi di ba, meron tayong scope of taxation hanggang dito lang sa teritory ng Pilipinas. So, if the goods, no, yung pinap pinagkukumpita natin ng VAT, okay, if that the basis will be you know, destined for consumption outside the Philippines, outside the territory, outside the border of the Philippines, wala po tayong ipapataw na buwis. Okay? So, please take note of that one. That is why, naka-identify dito in the Philippines only. Okay? But we also have to consider yung mga importations. Now, meron tayong tatlong klase ng VAT. We have the VAT on the sale of goods or properties. Meron tayong VAT on the importation of goods and VAT on the sale of services and use or list of properties. Basically, ito lang naman yan. No? Hinimay lamang po natin. No? Sale of goods or properties. Tapos identify dito, importation. And then, yung paggamit ng mga services. So, these are the three types or the kinds of value-added tax. Now, who are the persons liable to that value-added tax? In the sale, in the ordinary course of business, according to this one, huwag kayong papa-overwhelm class ha sa mga section 4, RR, section sa tax code. Hindi ko naman yan ipapamemorize sa inyo. Ang importante dito ay naintindihan natin yung konsepto. Ang reference na ito ay for your extra learning. If you want to study further, you are curious, ano ba yung nilalaman nitong section na ito? Okay, balikan ko nga ito. Puntahan ko nga ito. Meron naman akong PDF copy or accessible naman yung website ni BIR. E di silipin ko nga, ano yung RR 16-2005? So, you can check on that, na? Any person daw, in the course of his trade or business, sells, barters, exchanges, or leases goods or properties, or nag-render siya ng service, and any person na nag import ng goods shall be liable to VAT imposed on ayan, sections 106 to 108 in the tax code. Okay? So, yan po. Ano, please take note of that. Now, under sa importation naman, sino naman ang liable? Please take note, under this one, sale in the ordinary course, ang, ang liable po dyan is kung sino yung nagbebenta. Okay? Who in his course of trade or business or even sa performance ng kanyang services, nagsisell. Pagdating sa importation ng mga taxable goods, yung importer, okay? Whether an individual or corporation man yan and whether or not made in the course of his trade or business shall be liable to VAT imposed of Section 107 naman daw ng tax code. Pagdating sa sale in the ordinary course of business, the seller. Pagdating sa importation, the importer. Okay? Sila po ang liable dito sa VAT. How about sa transfer by a tax-exempt entity to non-tax-exempt entity? O, ang sabi sa Section 107B ng tax code, at pag sinabi nating tax code, this is the NIRC or the National Internal Revenue Code of the Philippines. No? 
In the case of tax-free importation, so we are referring to importation of goods into the Philippines. Oh, please take note. And ito, no, as a weight of participation na rin sa inyo. How do you define importation and comparing it to exportation? Anong difference nila? Okay? Basically, sino yung palabas, sino yung papasok? So, in the case of this one, ano? Importation of goods into the Philippines by persons, entities, or agencies exempt thou from tax. So, hindi sila binubuwisan, ano? Where such goods are subsequently sold, transferred, or exchanged in the Philippines to non-exempt persons or entities, the purchasers, transferees, or recipients shall be considered the importers thereof at sila po ang magiging liable doon sa internal revenue tax on such importation. Alright? So, that's for this one. Now, let's define what is goods or properties. No? Naka-open and close. Ah, naka, ano nga tawag dito? Nakalimutan ko tuloy. So, what is the meaning of goods or properties? Pag sinabi natin goods or properties, this refer to what? All tangible and intangible objects. Pag sinabi nating tangible, ano ba ang pagkakaintindi niyo diyan? O pag pag intangible, hindi siya nahahawakan. Samantalang pag tangible nahahawakan. So those are the difference, no? Tangible, may physical. Okay? Pwede mo siyang i-touch. Pag intangible, hindi mo siya na-touch, no? Halimbawa, mga softwares. So intangible 'yan. Okay? Which are capable of pecuniary estimation. So, eto na naman. Mahirap na naman, ano, ng te ang technical na naman ng mga terminologies. So, pag sinabi nating pecuniary, okay, nilagyan ko ng open and close parenthesis, monetary. Okay? It can be expressed in terms of money. No? So, that is what we mean by pecuniary estimation or the word pecuniary. Okay? So, tangible and intangible prod uh, products, objects, excuse me, which are capable of pecuniary estimation and shall include, among others, the following. One, two, three, four, five. Number one, real properties. Ano ba ang pagkakaintindi ninyo ng real properties? Okay? Held primarily for sale to customers or held for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business. Oh, mga ari-arian, mga hasyenda mo. Okay, mga lupain, no? These are real properties. Okay? Held primarily for sale. Pinanghahawakan mo 'yon pero ibebenta mo. Kunwari yung mga developers, no? May mga bahay at lupa. Those are real properties. Pero ito po ay binebenta. Or remember, sa intermediate accounting, we can consider yung mga house and lot or even lots ano, as inventory if it is held for sale. Okay? So, real properties held primarily for sale to customers or held for lease. Pinangahawakan natin yung mga properties na yon, kasi either ibebenta mo sa customers or papaupahan mo no? in the ordinary course of trade or business. So kung halimbawa, ano ka, real estate developer ka, kagaya ni SMDC. Okay? So, these are real properties held primarily for sale or for lease. No? The right or privilege to use patent, copyright, design or model, plan, secret formula or process. Mga intangibles po ito, no? Goodwill, trademark, trade brand or other like property or right mga karapatan at mga prebelehiyo, patent pag meron kang na invento, copyrights usually sa mga libro no, may copyright ka doon sa book mo na yan. O for research and development, mga design or model, plan, secret formula, eto pag halimbawa, ikaw ay isang scientist no, okay, goodwill trademark, uh, trademark mga trade brand, okay, usually yung mga companies Mga multinational companies, may mga pinangahawakan yun ng brand. Pinapangalagaan nila. Kasi, halimbawa, ang isang, ano, ang isang company, 
it is represented by his brand, by its ano no, um, logo. Uh, actually, brand is not all about the logo. Kasi limbawa, si Coca-Cola. Diba? Pag nakita mo pa lang yung logo nila na Coca-Cola, malalaman mo na agad. Okay? So, that is yung ano, no? um, trade brand or trademark. No? The right or privilege to use any industrial, commercial, or scientific equipment. The right or privilege to use motion picture films, films, tapes, and discs sa mga sinehan, ano? Okay? Radio, television, satellite transmission, and cable television time. Especially na dati, di ba? Yung ating mga TV, mga televisions ay... Okay? Uh, usong, actually, sa ngayon pa naman, ano? Uso pa rin naman yung mga radyo. Although, bibihira na, no? Kasi, naka-podcast na, naka-Spotify na, or kung sa ang man venue, di ba? So, medyo limited na lang yung radio. Although, meron pa rin naman. Okay? Yung mga televisions dati, mga cathode, ray tube pa, no? Uh, yung mga matatabang klase ng mga televisions. Okay, but those are some of the, ano, no? Goods or properties or they are considered as such. Now, getting sa sale of services, please take note of this. Kasi syempre, halimbawa, kung kayo, after ninyong graduate, nakapasa kayo ng board exam, okay? Naging CPA kayo. And after earning enough experience sa mga accounting firms, sa mga auditing firms, you started your own business nagtayo ka ng sarili mong negosyo. Okay? Now, you are providing your services now to your clients. So, dito ka napapasok. No? Binibenta mo ang iyong serviso. Performance of all kinds of services in the Philippines for others for a fee. Siyempre, pag nagpo-provide ka ng service, for a fee. Para kumita ka, no? hindi naman, for, hindi naman yan chari charitable institution. You are not working for charity, no? remuneration or consideration, whether in kind or in cash. So, it is not always in the form of money, no? It may be in kind. Okay? Or how about the VAT on the sale of services? Tax on payments for services rendered in the exercise of profession or calling. So, pag nagpo-provide tayo ng service, meron binubuwis din doon. Okay? So, binubuwisan din natin siya ng value-added tax. It is an indirect tax and may be passed on to the client or customer. It accrues at the time the service is collect the service fee is collected regardless of timing of collection. Anong ibig nito sabihin? Oh, it accrues daw. Alam naman natin no from our financial accounting, from our basic accounting, the word accrual, di ba? Accrual basis of accounting nga, di ba? So, yung tax daw, yung VAT, it accrues at the time the service fee is collected. Okay? Regardless of timing of collection. Such payments may be collected in advance or after the service is rendered. Pwedeng makolekta mo yan in advance kasama na yung VAT. Or after the service is rendered. Ito yung meron tayong, ano no, Anong klasing revenue yan? Accrued revenue tayo dito, no? Kasi after the service is rendered. Kaya naka-receivable, okay? Parang accounts receivable ngayon. Kasama po yung VAT doon sa kokolektahin natin. Kung nagbayad in advance, oh, such payments may be collected in advance. Ito naman yung mga unearned revenues, di ba? Advance collection. So pag nag-collecta tayo, meron din dapat kasama na VAT. Because it accrues at the time the service fee is collected. So para siyang, ano no, hindi siya parang, eto cash basis no, kung ma-observe mo. Kasi it accrues at the time the service is collected, no? Either advance or accrual. Okay? So laging kasama doon yung value added tax. In the case of, oh, ba't nawala yon? Ah, hindi, sorry. Eto muna. Hindi ko na lagyan ng ano no <laughs> ng animation etong part na ito. Oh, sale of real properties naman tayo. Pag nagbenta tayo ng mga ari-arian, 
real properties held primarily for sale to customers or held for sale in the ordinary course of trade or business of the seller. Pagdating dito, no? So, syempre, magkano ba yung halaga ng ating binibenta? Now, eto, mas common eto, no? Kasi, to manage cash flow. At saka, ang hirap kayang magbenta ng cash, straight cash, sa mga real properties. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin dyan, most of the time, mga milyones. Kaya mo ba magbayad straight? So, para ma-encourage yung iba, at para tumaas din yung benta dahil medyo may kamahalan ang mga real estate, by installment, no? So, installment ito, binibenta. Yung pagbabayad installment. So, yung mga real estate dealer shall be, shall be subject to VAT on the... Ah, sorry. In the case of sale on installment plan, real estate dealer shall be subject to VAT on the installment payments. So, yung VAT natin doon, binu uh, isinasama natin sa mga installment payments. So, halimbawa, 60 months mo, 5 years mo ito babayaran. Okay? Adi, kada bayad mo, may kasamang VAT po yan. The seller. Oh, please revisit your income taxation, ano, no? Na, na pag-uusapan na ito before. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng constructively received? Okay? Actually or constructively received? Pag actually, natanggap mo talaga. Ano nga ba yung constructively? Uh, you may comment down below as a way to participate if you really understand this one. Or if you want to research on it, ano, pwede mo akong balikan dyan. Okay? Oh, let's talk about now the characteristics of VAT. Ano ba ang mga characteristics nitong value-added tax? Unahin na po natin itong it is an indirect tax where tax shifting is always presumed. Pag sinabi lamang po natin na pa itong characteristic number one, ang ibig lang po nitong sabihin ay naipapasa po natin yung VAT because the amount of VAT may be passed on to the buyer. Okay? Si seller, pwede niya itong maipasa sa buyer, no? Okay? O, transferi, it may be passed on to the buyer, transferi, or lessee of the goods, properties, or services. Kasi, class, dito, si seller, siya lamang po yung ginagawang medium collecting agent ni BIR. Remember, the taxes are being remitted to the Bureau of Internal Revenue, si BIR. Kasi yan po yung ating ahensya ng gobyerno na in charge sa mga tax-related matters. No? So, si seller is the one statutorily liable to pay for the payment. O, ganito yan. Kung halimbawa, meron akong binili or may, ben may binibenta ako, ang selling price ko ay 100 pesos. Ngayon, required ako na patawan yung 100% VAT. So, imbes na 100 pesos yung sisingilin ko sa aking customer, ang ipapataw ko sa kanya ay 112 kasi kasama na po doon yung 12% VAT na kukolektahin ko sa aking customer at later on, i-remit ko kay BIR. That is why, liable siya for the payment of tax. Kung ako si seller, liable ako na magbayad kay BIR doon sa mga nakolekta kong VAT. Pero, hindi ako technically yung magbabayad ng buwis. Hindi nasa, wala sa akin yung burden ng pagbabayad. Uh, I mean, okay? Yung pag-absorb, ano? Okay? Tama naman yung pagbabayad no? in the sense na ak sa akin ang galing yung extra 12%. Ang, kara ang characteristics, nabubulol na ako. Ang karakteristik kasi ni VAT dito sa number 1, pwede ko itong maipasa sa mga buyers at sila talaga yung nagkikerry ng burden. Ako, taga ano lang, taga kolekta at taga bayad kay BIR. So technically, hindi sa akin magagaling yung ano no, paglabas ng pera. So, the burden of paying is not really on the seller 
but on the buyer or on the end user. That is why ito po ay indirect tax kasi pag indirect tax, di ba? Kung tayo si seller, dumadaan nagpapastro lang po ito sa atin. Okay, kaya may tax shifting. All right? Oh, in the case of importation, the importer is the one liable for the VAT. Now, etong tinatawag natin na burden of the tax. Sino ba ang may burden? Para lang klaro tayo dito ano? Sino? Si seller or si buyer? Ang burden ng tax na ito, yung burden ng VAT, yung parang ano do, dala-dala niya yung responsibilidad sa VAT is the final consumer. Kung ako si seller, binenta ko ito sa buyer ko na ipasa ko sa kanya yung VAT. Eh siya pala nagre-resell, no? Yung binili niya sa akin kasi ako pala si manufacturing, si manufacturer, pinasa ko sa kanya, wholesaler pala siya. So, nagbayad siya ng VAT sa akin, pero pag binenta niya 'yon, magsisingil din siya ng VAT. So, parang naipasa niya, no? Hindi na siya, hindi kasi siya yung ultimate user. So, although nagbayad siya sa akin, pero yung VAT na yun, maipapasa niya sa kanyang mga suki din. At kung yung suki na yun, yun yung pinakahuling consumer doon sa ating, ano no, hierarch, uh, doon sa ating food chain. Uh, hindi naman food chain, ano, kung hindi, sa chain ng, ano no, mga transactions. The final user, the ultimate consumer, siya yung magkikeri ng burden ng tax. Kasi wala na siyang mapagpapasahan, siya na yung pinaka nasa baba. Parang sa delegation ng mga trabaho, ano? kung ako yung boss, yung iba kong mga trabaho, maide-delegate ko ito sa aking mga supervisors. Yung supervisors, may mga iba din silang trabaho na maide-delegate sa mga staff. Eh kung ako na yung pinaka-bottom sa rank, ako yung staff level, hindi ko na ito maipapasa kung kanino man kasi ako na yung nasa pinakababa. Parang ganun po ano yung konsepto ng VAT. Okay? So, they are, sabi dito, born by the final consumers. Yun yung burden ng tax. Although, kung sino man yung nagpapataw ng buwis ng VAT na ito, ang liability nila is more of sa payment. Okay? Sa pag, pa, pagpa-file ng VAT return sa BIR pero hindi kanila manggagaling yung pera kasi kinolekta din nila ito. I hope clear tayo diyan ano. Please let me know na lang kung medyo malabo 'yon. Okay, therefore what is transferred or shifted is not the liability to pay the tax but the tax burden. Okay? So I hope klaro po 'yan. Next. It is consumption based. Okay? Paano ng consumption based? Kasi di ba sa pangalawang definition kanina, tax on consumption. No? So, what is a tax on consumption levied on the sale, barter, exchange, or lease of goods or properties and services in the Philippines and on importation of goods into the Philippines? Oh, meron tayong you know, pinalitan yung fund color, no? End user of consumer goods or services. Yung pinaka nasa baba they ultimately shoulder the tax. Okay? As a liability therefrom is passed on to the end users by the providers of these goods or services. So, consumption-based, no? Na-consume mo, oh, yung VAT kasama din. Pinasa mo ito, kasi nga, di ba, um, yung characteristic number one, it can be passed, no? it can be shifted. So, because of consumption, no? nakukonsume din ng iba. So, VAT forms substantial portion of consumer expenditure. Kaya nga, from the manufacturers, papunta doon sa mga wholesalers, from wholesalers, papunta sa mga retailers, from retailers, papunta naman doon sa mga um, maliliit ng mga tindahan, na, no? ng mga retailers din, hanggang sa sari-sari store na yon, tapos si end user na. E eh, siyempre, ganito class. Kung from the manufacturer, from the production, ang halaga ng isang item ay 100. Pag binenta nila yan, ni manufacturer, papatungan ng 12%. So, ang selling price kapag binili ng wholesaler, 112. Pag binenta niya yan, siyempre, tutubo siya. 
So from 112, kunwari, binenta niya yan, 130. E magpapatong ka ng 12%. So papatungan na naman. So 130 plus the 12%, yun yung selling price niya. At yun yung purchase price nung nasa ibaba niya. No? Pagdating sa pinakababa, so masyadong malaki na no? yung binabayaran nilang tax kasi marami na yung pinagdaanan nito at pumapatong-patong because of Siyempre, para kumita because that is still a business. So, ayan, the final burden talaga is doon sa final user. And it goes on and on because of, because of consumption, no? consumer expenditure. Alright, so that is number two. Now, number three, impose on the value added in each stage of production and distribution process. Actually, yun na rin naman ano, yung pinaliwanan ko sa inyo na naipapasa-pasa ito. Okay? But system assures fiscal adequacy through the collection of taxes. Remember, di ba, going back sa inyong income taxation, yung mga theories of taxation natin. So, meron tayong tinatawag na fiscal adequacy. Okay? Para, because, di ba, meron tayong lifeblood theory, hindi magsusurvive yung government kung wala itong pera para sa mga ano no mga proyekto nito para ma-survive, ma-sustain nito yung mga ginagawa, yung mga trabaho nito to protect the sovereign, to protect the society no para doon sa mga infrastructure, kung ano pa mang mga serbisyo publiko. So kinakailangan ng mangolekta ng tax para meron tayong pambuhay doon sa ating ano no mga ginagawa sa gobyerno. So, VAT system assures fiscal adequacy through the collection of taxes on every level of consumption. It's business in the supply chain. Okay, so yun na yung tinatawag ko kanina, supply chain. Ano? Takes part in the process of controlling and collecting the tax. Okay? Kung sino yung ano, no? bumili at nagbenta, meron siyang obligasyon kay BIR. Tapos sa baba niya, kung bumili siya at nagbenta siya, may obligation din siya kay BIR. Okay? So everyone, each business takes part in the process of controlling and collecting the tax. And later on, for the remission, yung pagre-remit po nito. Halimbawa, tignan po ninyo itong example. Okay? Ta tobacco manufacturing is a manufacturer of bombastic tobacco a sin product, no? subject to excise tax. It sells its products to Noipi distributors, the company's exclusive distributor in the Philippines. So, ang pinaka nasa taas, itong si tobacco manufacturing. Kasi siya yung nagbamanufacture. Siya yung gumagawa ng mga tabako. No? Ang exclusive distributor nito, si Noipi. Ngayon, exclusive distributor, no? siya yung kukuha ng mga produkto na minanufacture ni tabako at i-distribute niya ito sa iba pang mga establishments. So, etong si Noipi sells the same to the following. Binenta niya kay ABC Company na exclusive distributor naman sa Luzon. Binenta niya kay DEF na exclusive distributor naman sa Visayas at kay XYC na distributor sa Mindanao. So, kada Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, may mga distributor pa. Okay? Hindi directly kay tabako ano kundi dadaan pa kay Noipi. Ngayon, etong si ABC nagbenta ng produkto nito to its various consumer uh, customers kagaya ni 724 supermarket. Okay? So tanungin natin ano or pa paano ba natin i-analyze yung VAT? Okay? So VAT is imposed as follows. Si tabako, subject to VAT on its sale to Noipi. Tabako is the manufacturer, no? Okay, subject siya sa VAT kasi sale of this, ano no, cigarettes or this of, of the tabako. Tobacco, no? Tobacco. <laughs> Sorry. Okay? So, ngayon, in addition to VAT, tabako is also subject to excise tax. Uh, kasi sin product po ito, no? So, yung sin tax, excise tax. Ngayon, etong si Noipi will charge VAT. Okay? Magpapataw siya. Nabili niya ito kay Tabako, meron siyang input tax doon. Okay? Ngayon, 
Pag binenta niya na ito kay ABC, kay DEF, kay XYZ, uh, sorry, na parang na doble, no? To ABC, DEF, XYZ, no? Pag binenta niya yan, papatawa niya yun ng VAT. Uh, sorry for this one. Correct ko na lang ito sa actual file. So, yung VAT na pinataw niya doon is what we call the output VAT. Nung binili niya, yung VAT doon is the input VAT. Pag binenta niya, that is output VAT. O ngayon, si ABC, exclusive distributor of Luzon, sa Luzon, magpapataw naman siya ng VAT sa kanyang mga customers kagaya ni 724. At si 724, pag binenta niya yung mga tobacco products na yan, magcha-charge siya ng VAT sa kanyang mga customers at sa kanyang mga end users. So you see, there is a chain, no? supply chain, at saka yung pagpapataw ng mga value-added tax. Alright? O number four, um, characteristic. It is a credit invoice method, value-added tax. Anong ibig sabihin ng credit invoice method? Oh, please take note. Kasi kanina, di ba, na uh, pakita ko sa inyo yung output VAT. Although wala dito ano, pero ipinaliwanag ko rin sa inyo yung kabaligtaran, the input VAT. Meron tayong tinatawag na VAT payable. And the VAT payable is simply the difference between the output VAT and the input VAT. Pag mas malaki si output VAT sa input VAT, meron tayong VAT payable. Okay? What payable is the amount to be remitted by taxpayers to the BIR. Ito yung halaga, the net amount na ibabayad ng taxpayer kay BIR. Nagbenta ako, okay? Nagpataw ako doon ng 12% VAT. Kung umabot yun, kunwari lang, 10,000. That is my output VAT. At nagpo-purchase ako. Sa pag-purchase ko, may binabayaran din akong VAT. Okay? Yung VAT sa purchases is input VAT. Kunwari, ang total na input VAT ko ay 8,000. So, output VAT ko 10,000. Input VAT ko 8,000. Meron akong VAT payable. The net, no, the excess of output over input na 2,000. Yun lamang ang babayaran ko kay BIR. Okay? Hindi yung buong output VAT na 10,000. Because I have the input VAT. Okay, oh, please differentiate, no? please take note of the difference between output VAT, input VAT, and the VAT payable. The seller of goods or services passed on to the end users the liability to pay the tax who in turn may credit their VAT liability from the VAT payments they receive from the final consumer. Ang input VAT kasi, kinukonsider natin siya as asset Yung output VAT, kinukonsider natin itong liability. Di ba pag liability, meron tayong obligasyon. Pag asset, meron tayong resources. Anong resources natin doon? Kasi parang in the form of receivable, no? Parang ano no? Um, na, ano no? Nagbayad ka, di ba? So, naglabas ka ng pera. Okay? So, that is something that you own, no? Okay, so that you may credit that ano, no, amount from your VAT liability. So, pwede nating i-apply yung ating input VAT doon sa ating output VAT. So, that is why it is considered, uh, we, ups we upset input doon sa ating output VAT. Okay, this is because VAT is a consumption tax levied on sales to be borne by consumers with sellers acting simply as tax collectors. Okay? Parang ganito na lang. Simplihan. Subukan nating masimplify. Eh, BIR, bakit kita babayaran ng 10,000? Eh, nagbabayad din ako ng VAT. Okay? So, dapat lang kasi naglabas ako ng 8,000 at ang, ang nakolekta ko ay 10,000. Eh, di offset natin. Kung magkano yung difference, yun yung ibabayad ko sa'yo. Okay? So, yun po ano? I hope malinaw po ito. When we talk of a credit invoice method or tax credit approach, adapted ito sa Pilipinas in computing the VAT payable. VAT is imposed on the sale first called the output VAT and a tax credit is allowed or claimed on the VAT 
passed on to his purchase or cost of goods or services known as input tax. So, yun lamang po ano yung sinasabi ko kanina. Na-apply natin ito, na credit natin ito doon sa ating uh, doon sa ating VAT liability. Alright? So, I hope, well, sana ano, naintindihan ninyo kung medyo sa portion, may mga ilan na medyo malabo yung aking pagkakapaliwanag. Pero ang mga points to consider natin and for you to understand, ano yung input tax or the input VAT, ano yung output VAT, ano yung VAT payable, ano yung VAT liability, ano? Alright? So, yun po yun. O, example na lang para mas maliwanag. Minsan, ang hirap intindihan nito, ano, pag narrative. Mas naiintindihan natin ito pag inexplain or sinampulan through computation. Alimbawa, meron tayo dito si Alpha Corporation. Noong January 10, nagbenta siya ng product X kay Delta Incorporated. Nagkakahalaga ng 1 million plus 12% VAT. Okay? On January 15, 2021, Delta sold the product to Omega Corporation for 1.2 million plus VAT of 144,000. Question, how much is the VAT payable of Delta? Now, dito, ingat tayo, no? Kasi marami tayong mga corporations, mga companies dito. We have Alpha Corporation, we have Delta, we have Omega. Ang tinatanong, si Delta. Ano yung VAT payable ni Delta? So para ma-identify natin yung VAT payable, we have to consider ano yung output VAT, ano yung input VAT, and then kunin natin yung difference. So si Delta, okay, pag output VAT, tandaan ninyo, we are talking about sales. Pag input, we are talking about purchases. So output, ano yung benta? Eh si sabi dito, Delta sold the product to Omega for 1.2 million plus VAT of 144. 100, uh, 1.2 million times 12%, makukuha ninyo yung 144,000. So, yung ating output VAT ay 144,000. Ngayon, ano naman yung ating input VAT? The input VAT is your purchases. So, eto yun, no? Kasi si Alpha Corporation nagbenta ng product X kay Delta. So, si Delta yung purchaser, the buyer. So, 1 million times 12%, that is 120,000. Nung bumili siya ng product X kay Alpha Corporation, hindi lang isang milyon yung binayaran niya, kung hindi, 1,120,000 kasi kasama yung 12% VAT. Okay? So, 144 yung ating output VAT. Ito, no? pakita ko sa inyo yung ating solusyon. 120,000 yung ating uh, input VAT. We get the difference. Remember, VAT payable is the excess of output over input. Okay? So, 144 minus 120, we will have 24,000. And that is your VAT payable. May note tayo dito, the 120,000 is a tax credit. Okay? I-apply natin siya doon sa buwis na babayaran dapat natin kay BIR. Imbis na 144,000 yung ating i-remit, Kay BIR, 24,000 na lang. Kasi technically, meron tayong 120,000 na binayaran in relation sa VAT. E, i-apply lang natin. Nabili ko yan. 120 yung aking buwis dyan. Nabenta ko. Ipinasa ko. Merong tax shifting, no? Indirect cost. Ay, ano, no? Consumer, consumption based, di ba? So, naipasa ko sa ibang mga users yung burden of the tax. Okay? So, i-apply ko din siya doon sa aking ano no? Um, sa aking mga output VAT. Okay? So, the VAT payable is 24,000. Output tax or the output VAT is due on sale. Okay? Pag input VAT or input tax is on the, ato no? VAT due on or paid by a VAT registered on importation of goods or local purchases, including lease of or use of property in the course of his trade or business. So, yun lang din, class, yung mga pinapaliwanag ko kanina. Oh, ano tong item dito? 
if the tax or if the input tax daw inclusive of input tax carried over from the previous quarter exceeds the output tax, paano pag mas malaki yung input over output? Yung excess na yon shall be carried over to the succeeding quarters. Okay? So, pwede nating may apply yun later on. Okay? Kung meron kang... But payable, mas malaki yung output versus input. Pag input ay mas malaki sa output, no? So, hindi na yan payable. Nasa asset na yung ating excess kasi. So, it can be carried on. And the, on the succeeding quarters, pwede natin ito ma-apply later on. However, that any input tax attributable to zero-rated sales by IVAT registered person, kung zero-rated ka raw, okay? Zero-rated sales by IVAT registered person, pag zero-rated kasi, ganito yan. Sa mga purchases mo, may 12% VAT ka. Pero dahil may mga particular tayong sales na zero-rated, hindi, wala po yan, ano, 12% VAT. 0% tayo diyan. So wala tayong output VAT doon ano. So ang dating tuloy, ano, meron tayong input VAT, no? So pwede nating ma-apply 'yon at his option, it can be refunded or applied for a tax credit certificate. Etong tax credit certificate, ito yung mapag-a-applyan, magagamit natin para i-apply doon sa ating mga output VAT, no? Para mas mababa na lang yung VAT payable natin, yung VAT liability. Okay, the tax credit certificate may be used in the payment of internal revenue taxes subject to the limitations as may be provided for by law as well as other implementing rules. We will tackle on later on ano pag may mga sample na computation siguro tayo kasi may tinutukoy dito na pwede natin itong maipasa sa mga succeeding quarters at pwede nating magamit for the payment of internal revenue taxes. Yes sir. Hindi ko naiintindihan kasi nga wala ka namang VAT payable. Eh bakit ka may babayaran? Ano yung tinutukoy ko dito na babayaran? VAT liability ba? Ang sinasabi kasi dito, payment of internal revenue taxes. So we can apply eh, zero rated sales kasi ako usually. So lagi lang akong input VAT. So wala akong output VAT. So mala, marami akong tax, may apply na tax credit. Ano? So it can be used in the payment of internal revenue taxes subject to limitations. So we will explore on that later on ano sa mga separate sessions sa mga separate topics natin dito. But for the time being, I want you to appreciate this concept, no? All right? So I hope may naintindihan po ninyo 'yan. Please let me know kung merong kinakailangan i-clarify. I know ano, minsan nag-stutter ako sa aking explanation or parang medyo baka nalabuan kayo sa aking pagpapaliwanag. In that case, ano, I want you to comment or ask for clarification if in case meron kayong hindi naiintindihan. At I will be happy to accommodate you ano, para masagot ko kung ano man yung questions ninyo related dito sa ating discussion. Okay? So hanggang dito muna tayo. Medyo mahaba-haba itong ating discussion sa ngayon sa video lecture na ito. But I hope you learn something from the value added tax and its and its characteristics. Okay class, I'll see you sa mga susunod na video lectures. Bye-bye.